During these times together, I want to give you kernels of things that I've collected throughout ministry, throughout 20, how many years of ministry now? <laughs> I, was, uh, I became an intern pastor in 1997, so <laughs> quite a few years now. Among them is this thing that I call the give-give dynamic of the kingdom of God. That when we focus on the giving, the taking or receiving will take care of itself. It is taught throughout the scriptures. We, it, the scriptures don't teach us to take. The scriptures teach us to give. And promises that when we give, the taking will take care of itself. Take a look. Now, Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. This is illustrated. This Heavenly principle of giving, giving, give, give dynamic of the kingdom of God is illustrated well right here. Okay? Let's read these verses. Let me explain a little bit as we go along. One gives freely yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. There's a person that gives freely but that person seems so rich, full of resources all the time. I would imagine these riches encompass much more than money. But if we can broaden the definition of riches, a little true riches, riches that we would truly want, riches that would, that would truly give meaning to life, riches that truly last, then there are definitely people who give and give and give and yet are so rich. And others who withhold, they hold, withhold, withhold, and hoard, but they always suffer what? They're always wanting more. Story of a lady in a subway found her, her, her dead body found there. In her clothing, they found a key to a locker in the subway and when they opened the locker they found banknotes amount to an incredible amount of money yet she was living without a home hmm. uh, well let me just move on here real quickly uh, whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. As Jesus said, if anyone gives a cup of cold water in my name to one of these little ones, then that gift will not be wasted. In fact, Jesus says, as much as you've done it to the least of these, you have done it to me. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched. There's a promise here. Now, 26 is, needs a little bit of explaining. If, but if you think about it a little bit, it makes sense pretty easily. The people curse him who holds back grain, but a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. Now, if you don't think of it too simplistically, this is the language of commerce, of business. You have the resources to feed people, but you are holding it back. You are hoarding grain. Why? You're waiting for the prices to go up and allowing people to suffer right now. But the person who sells the grain will be blessed, even if they lose out monetarily, even if they don't get as much money for the same amount of grain. They're willing to let it go and suffer the loss so that they might be able to feed and benefit more people. That person is truly blessed, as opposed to the very shrewd business person who will wait for the prices to rise to sell his goods. I think there is a word here for those of us who are going into business or other forms of work, productive, God-honoring work, to make sure that it is God-honoring, to, to make sure that it is done with generosity. In the New Testament, the Bible tells us a good reason to work. I preached a sermon called, you know, How to Ask God for a Million Dollars. There's nothing wrong with asking the Lord for riches if you have the right motivation. That is, to express God's heart of generosity in sharing it with others who are in need. Yeah, that's a good motivation to want to be a rich person. 
Yes, you get to enjoy God's goodness, his generosity, but then you get to be a channel of that same generosity. That's a good motivation. That is a Christ-like motivation. Let's think about Jesus for a moment. When we think of Jesus, we think of the one who left the praises of heaven to receive the curses of man. If anyone got a bum deal, and Jesus did. But... Jesus felt that he got the best deal ever. He came like a merchant seeking precious pearls. He found one that had been discarded and decided that that one pearl was worth leaving all of heaven for. That's how Jesus thinks of you and me. That's the kind of love that you and I have received. And what was the result? He received us. And he received all of creation. He stepped into his rightful position as God's heir of everything. All things were made through him and for him. And Jesus stood forth as that very one for whom and to him all things were created and belong. We belong to him. What should be our mentality? What should be the principle by which we live? It is the give-give dynamic. Let's focus on the giving. And the taking or the receiving will take care of itself. That is the general principle. I'm not saying that you must not be wise. I'm not saying that you must calculate. But how often, how often, seriously, has, has calculation just soiled our generosity, no? When you give a Christmas gift to somebody, if you find yourself calculating whether or not what that person gave last year or what that person will give this year amounts to the amount that you have, quote-unquote, sacrificed, that is not a gift. That is a bartering situation, isn't it? And yet we have this tendency. How do we combat this? The way to combat it, child of God, you have the power is to remember what you have received in Jesus, and how you can never outgive him when you become a channel of his generosity. This give give dynamic of the kingdom of God. Exercise it toward those who need God's generosity, especially starting with people who are your Jerusalem your husband, your wife, your children, your brothers, your sisters. Extend forgiveness, kindness, generosity, the generosity of your heart, the riches that you have. Even if you don't have a penny to your name, you are rich beyond compare. Share those riches and find that your riches in Jesus, riches of love, just expand. I pray that you will find that as a reality today and this week and as a testimony in the coming days. I praise God for you. Let's worship together. Find our riches in Him is the key to generosity. Let's worship. There's a cry in my heart for Your glory to fall, for Your presence to fill up my senses. There's a yearning again, a thirst. A hunger for things that are deeper Could you take me beyond? Could you carry me through? If I open my heart, could I go there with you? Oh, what do I have if I don't have you? For your glory to fall, for your presence to fill up my senses. There's a yearning again, a thirst for this.
treasure beyond measure, pleasure beyond compare, and we worship you, find our satisfaction in you, and count on your promise that the riches of knowing you will be worth anything that we might remotely call sacrifice. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. 